Hi and welcome to Design School by WPAlgorithm.com. In this tutorial, I'll explain the brand new Elementor Grid Container, which will allow you to create complex two-dimensional layouts such as this one, and not just creating them and organizing them into rows and columns. You can also change the alignment of the items with just click of a button. You can also customize the number of rows, columns and do so much more. In order to use the grid container, we need to first enable it. So go to your WordPress dashboard, click on settings and then click on features. Scroll down till you see grid container. It will be selected as default. Click on the drop down and click on active. Scroll all the way down and click on save changes. And you can also clear or purge all the cache if you have a caching plugin. Once you do that, you are good to go. The grid will be enabled. Hold down command or control E that opens up finder. Just type new and let's create a new page. So just type new page and click this create add new page button. So that will take you that will create a new page with Elementor and that will open up this dialog box. Now click on the settings cog, change the page layout to full width. You can also rename the page. Just call it. We're good to go. Now click on the widgets button. By the way, this is the brand new Elementor top bar. So the question here is why do you even need grid? I'll just click on this plus button and notice now you see two options. One is a flexbox container and the second one is grid container. I'll click on grid and pick the starting layout. You can customize it totally later. I'll click on this plus button again and let's choose a flexbox container. Notice with flexbox, it's one directional meaning you can put content only in one directions and you might be asking what are these layouts well when you click on each of them they're in turn creating inner containers to align the elements within in two dimensions whereas with grid container items are already put into rows and columns in two dimensions and this is the reason why they have developed grid framework in css after developing the flexbox framework these are basically pure CSS frameworks that element recently adapted. I'll just close or delete the container that has flex boxes. Let's deal with the grids now again. I'll close this again or delete it. Let's click and choose grid again. Let's pick and study grid. So I picked the first option and it created two dotted boxes. You can click on the container and there's something called grid outline. You can choose to show or hide it. I prefer to show it for you so that you can understand it clearly. Every grid is divided into columns and rows. Rows hold the elements in horizontal direction and columns hold the elements or items within in vertical direction. Pretty straightforward. So let's click on the plus button. Let's drag an image widget into this first item. Also, you can drag other containers within the grid container anyway let's choose an image maybe i'll just pick this image click on select so that's our first item in the grid to add new item you can click on the plus button and i just want an icon box after this so i'll search for it i'll just click drag it and when i try to drag it you can see i can put it on the left of it or right of it each cell or the dotted border can only hold one element when I click on the container again so the dotted border indicates the individual items in the grid and it helps you visualize the grid let's drag in another widget maybe let's drag a call to action widget this time I'll just click and drag it leave it and there we have a call to action widget let's pick something else maybe I'll just pick this image for now so we have three widgets I'll click on the container and starting with the content width, which is the width of the content within the grid. You can either pick boxed or full width. Full width occupies the whole width of the container. So the elements are stretched to fit the width or you can choose boxed. You can define a minimum height for your container like this. But anyway, the elements in the grid will force the grid to stretch automatically. Layout, you can change it to flexbox if you wish to, but let's leave it at grid. And then you have something called columns and rows. Remember what I told you about grid? It helps you organize in two dimensions using rows and columns. You can specify the number of rows and you can specify the number of columns. And the units 
here are called fr which we'll discuss in a bit but you can think of it like number of columns so if i say 3 fr it will create three columns and it just has one row for now but you can say two and that creates two rows how can you tell so rows are horizontal directions and if you look horizontally you have three dotted boxes and then the next one you have another three so when you specify two in the rows box it automatically created two rows and three columns which is what we've specified here let's add another widget or let's duplicate the same widget just to save us some time i'll duplicate it twice and i'll just duplicate this widget now let's duplicate it again and notice even though we mentioned we just wanted two rows the third row is automatically created to accommodate the overflow that is because the autoflow is set to row so whenever there's not enough sufficient space it will automatically create a new row and push the content into the new row so we have the first row having the image box or the call to action widget the second one has this icon box and this one has image now what about this fr what does it stand for fr is a unit used in grid if you say 4 fr it means the column width of each column should be 1/4 of the total width available columns are what you use to align elements vertically so for the vertical things you have width and for horizontal things you have height right so there'll be four columns and each column will have equal width so the total width available will be divided equally among them you can see that here so the boxes are squished to accommodate the width and the same thing with rows when you say 2 fr it means each row or the height should be equally divided between the rows so all the, the first row has the same height as the second row row is basically this whole horizontal thing the first row is this whole horizontal thing that has these four widgets so that is what fr stands for but when you click on it with the feature recently introduced in elementor you can click on the pencil icon and now you can really play with the columns and rows and it is really powerful so let's pick the pencil icon now and it has a number if you remove it it will auto create the number of columns but you can specify the width of each column and separate them with spaces so let's say you just need two columns you can say 100 pixels space 100 pixels and that will just create two columns you can see there are only two vertical spaces and rest all are pushed into other spaces and the width of each column is 100 pixels you can give another space and say 100 pixels that will create three columns with 100 pixels width of each column or you can say something like this so 100 pixels first column 100 pixels second column and the third column should have 200 pixels you can see that in here you can change this to 300 pixels so the first column can have a width of 300 pixels so basically you can have as many number of columns as you want and specify the width of each column and you can use all the typical units that you can expect so you can say 50% as well so that the third column occupies 50% of the available width of the container you can do the same with this you can say 20% so something like that right and there has to be space between each of the units and then there's something called fr which we've already discussed let's say i say 2 fr 1 fr and 1 fr so it will divide the whole thing into four fractions and the first column will get twice as much as width as the other two columns that's what this means or you can say something like this so this one gets three times as much as space as the other two columns now this is not exactly the three times this width but whatever the available width is it will get three times as much as it can right so that's what fr means you can also mix and match between other units so you can say something like that or if you just prefer a number just give it here and it will automatically create four columns now the 4 fr doesn't mean four columns but elementor has customized the code let me show you i'll just minimize this and i'll right click click on inspect element and when we click on the grid scroll down you can see when we picked four it created something called a repeat function so here it's 
automatically creating four columns with one FR width for each column. And it's doing the same with rows as well. So Elementor just customized the code to include that. So when you're entering that number, they're putting that number here in here. But one FR doesn't mean one column, but you understand the whole thing. You can also customize the width of each of the column and you can do the same thing with rows. Again, you can click here and choose the pencil icon and for rows, you have height. So you can say something like 10 VH. So 10 times the vertical height available. You can say something like in pixels. So you can have one row in 500 pixels. The second row can also have 500 pixels height. Or you can change the height of second row, 300 pixels. See how this is squished. So that is how it looks when you give absolute units. But don't pick absolute units like pixels or whatever. Always pick FR or relative units which are better for responsive design. So here we just have two rows and the first row has 500 pixels width or height and the second row has 300 pixels height and you can say 100% VH. So the third one will have the total height available of the viewport. You can do the same with all others. So you can say 100 VH, 100 VH. You now get the whole thing, right? Easier thing is to pick FR and just give a number. And then you have gaps. So you can pick gap between columns and rows. You can have 50 pixels. You can unlink the values. And you can also use custom units for this. So for columns, you can have 50 pixels gap. And for a row, maybe you can have like 10 pixels gap, totally up to you. Now auto flow, like we've discussed, when there's not enough space, it will push that into a row instead of flowing that into a column, which will squish the things. Then you have justify items. Since the items already fit the width, there's nothing really to justify. I'll just click on the plus button. Let's click this and I'll just delete this grid. Let's first drag in a heading widget and then let's drag in a button or an image let's pick an image and now let's have a button okay i'll just click on this again and i'll choose three columns for this and here's a trick to duplicate entire row so you can click on the structure or the navigator in previous versions. Hold down command or control and click on each of them. Right click on them in the navigator or structure. Just duplicate them. Just like that we've duplicated a row. We'll do it again. Hold down command and click on these three. Right click and duplicate it again. So we have copies of this and we have like three rows and three columns, right? Even though we just picked one, it automatically pushed into new rows. Anyway, so now when you choose the options such as justify items, it moves the elements in the direction of the flow or aligns the element in the direction of the flow. Notice our flow is row. So everything flows in the horizontal direction first before heading out vertically or breaking apart vertically. So you can align the elements horizontally and you can see how that looks like all the buttons are centered when you justify items and align item is cross axis alignment so all the elements are pushed in the cross axis to the regular flow since our flow is row align items will align the items in the vertical direction or in the direction of columns see these options how they are being manipulated vertically so just with two clicks you can align all of the items in the grid without having to use complex flexbox container and this is why again grid was introduced in css and by the way this whole grid container is responsive so you can customize the number of columns per device so you can click on the tablet and you can see it's inheriting the three column but you can set it to two columns or use custom units so let you can say something like 50 percent for the first column and 50 percent for the second column just like that 
it's customized just for tablet devices and on desktop you have your normal flow similarly you can do it but on mobile it's usually stacked on top of one another and you can do the same for rows as well so you can use custom units for rows or you can simply use fr so let's say you can say 50 vh for the first row 50 vh for the second row now this particular dotted border is a bit buggy at the moment since this is beta at the time of making this video but this whole thing is one row or one item and this button is occupied within one item and you can see all of them in action so that's how you can totally customize and place and organize elements using the grid layout in two dimensional format and it's really powerful add that so let's say I'll just remove this button from here for now I'll just click on this plus button and if I drag in a container now you have a container and this can be a flexbox container or another grid container and if it's a flexbox you can drag widgets within this so this whole thing is one grid item and now you can easily manipulate whatever you need you can take and put this in here just like that you've manipulated that particular grid item and that is your first look at the grid container available with Elementor 3.13 and above 